or as they say, of an age, uh, perhaps to remember Ima Sumac. Do you remember hearing about her, reading about her, seeing her picture on the cover of Life magazine? Good. Okay, I actually have some beautiful pictures of her that were taken by Steve Lanning. Yeah, he took them. He, he w he's, was, yeah, he was her agent for a while. And he did these uh, beautiful headshots of her. And I hope she paid him big bucks because they're beautiful. Here she is in an even more exotic, at least brightly colored picture. And here, she looks like an, you know, a young peasant girl out to feed the llamas in Peru, which was her, uh, oh, please come and sit down. And don't be embarrassed to come late. Everybody here lives in our, in our <laughs> is a good friend. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, here she looks more, more natural. Anyway, um, this story is not really about her so much. She is in it. She is one of the players in this uh, story. But her birth name was Zoila Augusta Imperatiz Javiera del Castillo. And her nickname was the Peruvian Songbird. Uh, she was born in 1922 and died in, uh, in Peru and then in, uh, she died in 2008 in Silver Lake, California. And she had lived, uh, when she came to the United States in the 1940s, she remained here and gave concerts as she had done in Peru. And uh, she was known for her astonishing four and a half octave vocal range. Uh, her name was, you know, not they gave her a, um, a pronounceable name, they thought, <laughs> um, uh, as a stage name. And she claimed to have been descended from the Incas, which is possible. And uh, she, uh, as I said, made a big splash within the media. And she became, um, she went to Capitol Records in 1950. And uh, does anybody know the urban legend about her that was uh, spread by Walter Winchell, that she was really a Jewish girl from Brooklyn? <laughs> and uh, her na uh, the name Amy Camus, and uh, that was not true. It started with a joke among uh, musicians, and somehow Walter Winchell picked it up and announced it. So don't listen to Walter Winchell. He's a... Uh, Anyway, he's dead anyway, right? <laughs> sort of inev inevitable. Well, I feel very comfortable up here, and I don't, um, I'm not worried about making any mistakes because, uh, for one thing, I know I feel good about you, and I hope you feel good about me, and if you're ever up here, I will come and, and laugh at the right places, and, okay. So... Um, I, I forget the date this was published. It's, it's got it here. But it was um, a short story. This is a short story by Thomas Meehan that was in the um, New Yorker magazine. And it's not so much about her. It's about her name. All right, here we go. In this dream, which I have had on the night of the full moon for the past three months, I'm giving a cocktail party in honor of Ima Sumac, the famous Peruvian singer. This is strange at once, for while I have unbounded admiration for four octave voices, I have never met Miss Sumac. And even in a dream, it seems unlikely that I should be giving her a party. No matter, she and I are in the small living room of my apartment on Charles Street in Greenwich Village and we are getting along famously. I have told her several of my Swedish dialect stories, and she has reciprocated by singing for me in Quechua, a medley of Andean folk songs. Other guests are expected momentarily. 
I have no idea, however, who any of them will be. Miss Sumac is wearing a blue ball gown, and I am in white tie and tails. Obviously, despite the somewhat unfashionable neighborhood and the cramped quarters of my apartment, it is to be a pretty swell affair. In any case, I have spread several dishes of Fritos about the room, and on what is normally my typing table, there is a bowl of hot glug, a Swedish punch made with red wine. The doorbell rings. A guest. I go to the door, and there, to my astonished delight, is Ava Gardner. This is going to be a bit of all right, I think. Tom, darling, she says, embracing me warmly. How wonderful of you to have asked me. In my waking hours, unfortunately, I have never met Miss Gardner. In my dream, though, my guests seem to know me rather intimately, while oddly, none of them seem to know each other. It is their strong, apparently it is their strong common affection for me that has brought them to Charles Street. For my part, although I immediately recognize each guest as he or she arrives, I have no memory of ever having met any of them, or for that matter, of having invited them to a party in my apartment. <laughs> On with the dream, however. Miss Gardner, I say, I'd like you to meet Miss Ema Sumac. Charmed, says Miss Sumac. Delighted, counters Miss Gardner. Ah, but Tom, says Miss Sumac, with an enchanting laugh, which runs up the scale from E above middle C to C above high C. Let us not, on this of all occasions, be formal. Por favor, introduce each guest only by the first name, so that we may all quickly become, how shall I say, amigos. Typical Peruvian friendliness, I think, and introduce the two. Eva, Ima, I say. We sit around for some time, sipping glug and munching Fritos. Things seem to be going well. The doorbell rings again. The second guest is a man, Abba Eben, the former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. You guys got it already. You're so quick. Again, I make the introductions, and bowing to the wishes of the guest of honor, keep things on a first-name basis. Abba Ima, Abba Eva, I say. I stifle a grin, but neither Miss Sumac nor my two other guests see anything amusing in the exchange. We chat. The bell rings again, and I'm pleased to find Una O'Neill, Charlie Chaplin's wife at the door. She is alone. I bring her into the room. Una Ima, Una Ava, Una Abba, I say. We are standing in a circle now, smiling brightly, but not talking much. I sense a slight strain, but the party is young and may yet come to life. The bell again. It is another man. Ugo Betty, the Italian, <laughs> the Italian playwright. A bit hurriedly, I introduce him to the circle. Ugo Ima, Ugo Ava, Ugo Uno, Ugo Abba, I say. Miss Sumac gives me an enigmatic glance I try to interpret. Boredom? Thirst? No. She looks almost irritated. Hastily, I replenish everyone's glass. For some reason, I begin to hope that no other guests have been invited. The doorbell rings once again, however, and I open the door on two lovely actresses, Ona Munson and Ida Lupino. This gives me a happy inspiration for my introductions. Ona and Ida, I say, surely you know Ima and Ava. Ona, Ana, Abba, damn, it doesn't come out even. Ida, Ona, Ugo, I finish lamely. I have scarcely given Miss Munson and Miss Lupino their first drinks when I am again summoned to the door. My guests stand stony-faced as I usher in the new arrival, the young Aga Khan. <laughs> he is looking exceptionally well turned out in a dinner jacket with a plaid cummerbund. Smiling too cheerfully, I introduce him to the waiting group. 
Folks, I say, using a word I have always detested. Here's the Aga Khan, you know. But there is silence, so I must continue. Aga Ima, Aga, aga Una, Aga Ida, Aga Ugo. Oops. The Aga Khan and Mr. Ebon, I notice, take an immediate dislike to each other, and I begin to feel an unmistakable pall descending over my party. I suggest a game of charades. This is met with glacial looks from everyone, including Miss Gardner, whose earlier affection for me has now totally vanished. When the doorbell rings this time, everyone turns and glares at the door. I open it and discover another pair, Ira Wolfert, the novelist, and Ilya Ehrenberg, the Russian novelist. The latter, I know, is quite a man of the world, so I try a new approach. Ilya, I say, why don't you just introduce yourself and Ira? You know all these lovely people, don't you? Niet, says Mr. Ehrenberg, can't say that I do. Oh, all right, I say. Ilya, Ira, here's Ima, Eva, Una, Ilya, Ira, Ana, Ida, Abba, Ugo, Aga. I ask Miss Sumac to sing for us. She refuses. We continue with the glug and some hopelessly inane small talk. Mr. Ebon and the Aga Khan stand at opposite sides of the room, glaring at each other. I begin to wish I had never given the goddamn party. Ona Munson jostles Ugo Betty's elbow by accident, spilling his drink. I spring forward to put them at their ease, whipping a handkerchief from my pocket. Never mind, I cry. No damage done. Ugo, you go. Get yourself another drink. I'll just wipe this glug off my uh, uh, rug. The guests fix me with narrow eyes, narrowed eyes. At this moment, Eva Gabor, the Hungarian actress, sweeps through the door, which I have cleverly left open. Unaware of the way things are going, she embraces me and turns, beaming to meet the others. Inevitably, I must make the introductions. I start rapidly. Eva, meet Ima and Eva and Una, but then I find that Miss Gabor is pausing to hug each guest in turn, so I am forced to make the remaining introductions separately. Eva Ona, Eva Ida, Eva Ugo, Eva Abba, Eva Ilya, Eva Ara, Eva Aga. This is a terrible party. All the men have bunched up. We stand in a circle glowering at one another. I can think of nothing to say. I feel oddly hemmed in like a man who is about to be stoned to death. Am I late? asks the actress Uta Hagen gaily as she comes tripping into the room. No, no, I say gallantly, taking her arm and steering her at once towards the punch bowl and away from the others. Please have the common decency to introduce your guests to one another, says Miss Sumac in a cold monotone, and in the proper manner. In the dream, Ema Sumac seems to have some kind of hold over me, and I must do what she wishes. Okay, okay, I snap crossly. Uda Ima, Uda Eva, Uda Una, Uda Anna, Uda Ida, Uda Ugo, Uda Abu, Uda Ilya, Uda Ira, Uda Aga, Uda Eva. I turn to see if this has placated Miss Sumac, but she coldly ignores me. I have begun to hate her. The guests again fix me with narrow eyes. In the hope that no further company will arrive, I silently close the door. The bell rings instantly, however, and I feel a chill run down my spine. I pretend not to hear it. Answer the door, Miss Sumac says peremptorily. 
my circle of guests moves menacingly toward me. With a plummeting heart, I open the door. Standing before me in immaculate evening dress is a sturdy, distinguished-looking man. He is the Polish concert pianist, Miechislaw Horzowski. <laughs> Come in, Miechislaw, I cry with tears in my eyes. I've never been so happy to see anyone in my life. And here always, my dream ends. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been waiting for years to have a chance to read this story. It's my favorite. Now, if you want to hear it again, it's on the web, uh, read once by uh, the actress uh, Christine Baranski, and another time by um, Barbara Streisand. So you have it right at your fingertips, if you wish. You can. Memorize it, and you can entertain your friends in the safety of your own home. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. And again, thanks to Steve for the beautiful, beautiful pictures. Thank you. I hope she paid you for them. She, okay, thank you. <laughs>